Eiffel Tower listeners, it's another Monday in France, and we all know what that means. Rain, apparently. It's raining today. But no, I'm just kidding. What it actually means is another episode of the Eiffel Tower podcast, Figuring Out France, one podcast episode at a time. I'm Oliver G. I'm your host, and this week we're talking about how to annoy French people, if that's the kind of thing you want to do. I mean, personally, I wouldn't want to do it. Uh, I'd take this list, if I were you, and I'd learn from it as a way of how not to irritate French people if you happen to meet one in France or especially abroad. The guest I've got today is an interesting one. Her name is Véronique Savoie, and she runs a blog and a website called French Girl in Seattle. She's a French girl. She lives in Seattle, uh, if you hadn't put two and two together from the name. And she's a long-time listener to this podcast. In fact, she's been there since episode one. And uh, yeah, she's not in Seattle today. She was in Paris. Literally, we recorded... I think this is the first time in a long time that I've done the episode on the day that it's getting released. So we've just been in the studio together. We had this conversation. She came in with this great list about how to annoy French people. She gave me some pronunciation tips. She gave me some language tips. So uh, yeah, enjoy the episode. At the end of it, where I usually would read reviews, I'm going to talk a little bit about the plans for the upcoming season four that starts this summer uh, with an email from what might be the kindest listener uh, that I've got to the whole show. I don't know. You tell me. That's going to be at the end of the show. But first, here's Véronique Savoie. One man, one country, one red scooter. Here's the Earful Tower with Oliver G. Véronique, welcome to the studio. Bonjour, Oliver. Whoa, I thought you were going to do the whole thing in French. You're not, are you? Bonjour. Oh my goodness. How are you? Very well, thank so, you. So you are the f you're a French girl in Seattle. Yes, I am. But you're in Paris. Yes, I am. Confusing. I'm a French girl originally from Toulouse who lived in Paris for a long time, then relocated to Seattle 22 years ago. And I come back to Paris every year, at least once a year. Is that true? Yes. You my come back to France or Paris? Come back to Paris because my close my parents and brother are here, but then I try to travel around France as well. But I'm on this trip. I'm only in Paris. Okay, that's great. Well, yeah. we're, it's an honor to have you in the studio. As I oh. will have already said, you're a friend of the show. You've yes. been listening. I think you've been listening since the, the beginning. Yes, I've been listening since uh, the first one. I think season one. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think you're the first. Maybe the first guest who's listened to all the episodes. So that is a treat. I have. Is there going to be a quiz? Uh, we can maybe do a <laughs> quiz at the end. Um, but what I thought is you as a, a French person who lives outside of France mm -hmm. are the perfect person to explain this kind of idea of the things that the rest of us foreigners say to French people that maybe annoys them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of, uh, as a French person, be the authority on... Oh, on, boy. Yeah. <laughs> is that all right? <laughs> because I, I love being the authority. Well, I couldn't very well have you in talking about your new restaurant in Paris because you live in Seattle. That is That's true. That's not going to work, is it? Nope. Oh. Nope. Okay. It wouldn't work. So before we get started on this kind of this kind of list, I thought we'd talk a little bit about who you are and, and, uh, and your blog and your website and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Thank um, you. For someone who's, who's sitting there listening, go, I've never heard of French Girl in Seattle. What do they need to know? Well, uh, it's a little, it is a little strange because I am a French girl based in Seattle. And when I started my blog seven years ago, it was mostly a blog that was going to be in French for my French students. I used to be a French tutor and had a business in Seattle. Right. And I started talking about France for these people, for my students. And then people were like, well, we can't read it. It's not in English. <laughs> so then I started writing in English. The switch. Uh, yep. And then I don't really write much about Seattle. I try to, but a lot of it, that I discovered there was a huge you know, demand for that. My students, their friends, the people who came to my travel workshops in Seattle. So they were interested in France. And that's what I know. A lot of people in uh, in that whole area in the States mm -hmm. are interested in France. Yes. Do you know why? Yeah, I Well, because they have good taste. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Yes, they a do. A lot of them listen yes, to this podcast. Do. Absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, there is a huge Francophile community in the States. In fact, uh, about 80% of the people who follow me are, I know, are women who are Francophiles, huge Francophiles, and most of them are Americans. Cool. Um, but there are also Australians, English people, and what makes me really proud is some of my followers are actually French people, French people who live in France and French people who live in the States. And I'm very proud of that. That's cool. It's, yes. It's confusing if you think about it too much. It's like mm -hmm. Inception. I you know. You've got French people 
in the States and, you know, I'm confused. I know, but it's flattering to me because uh, the French are very argumentative and if they didn't like what they hear, they would let me know right away. Uh -huh. And yet they are mostly very supportive of what I share on my Facebook page or on the blog and they really like it. So that makes me feel good. And so a lot of the stuff on your blog and Facebook page and the blog is frenchgirlinseattle.com. Yep. yep. This Every is all, this is France. This is French. This is just... French life. Yep. I try to... Um, What I've tried to do is really show France and French culture through the eyes of a French native mm. because there are a lot of people out there who uh, blog about France, um, foreigners mm. and even expats here in Paris or in France, like right? Like me. Like you. Yeah. And so I thought people would be interested in seeing what is it that a French person looks at when she comes to Paris? What is it that she does? Sure. Does she do the same or not? Also, I love debunking stereotypes yep. about the French. Which we're going to do in a minute as well. Yep. But what what's interesting about it is that you've got this perspective as an expat a french expat abroad mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you also have this idea of you know what you know the misconceptions and all that kind of stuff from the, the from your readers what they might have although mm -hmm. you're not just sitting in paris like a lot of the other french bloggers no no I, i i like to travel around france i like to talk about france i like to take them to places where people don't always go even small towns if i drive through them i'll write a blog post about it mm -hmm. i'd like them to see that paris is really not france and i should add that in case anyone's listening thinking What's that kind of grumbling noise in the background? It's not my stomach. It's the uh, there's builders two floors down. I'm apparently. glad you said that. I was going to <laughs> offer you some biscuits I have in the it's bag. It's the builders. It's the builders. I don't know what they're doing down there. But <laughs> if you're wondering, you can just imagine that you're in a Paris studio with uh, Veronique and me. Um, but we'll use that as a segue to get into uh, today's topic, which I've uh, I've got your list written down in front of me here that we could go through how to annoy the French. Although truly. It's more of a guide on how not to annoy French people. Yeah, uh, it's both, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's things that might surprise French people when they first arrive in mm. a foreign country mm. like the United like States. Like you did 22 years ago. La well, longer than that. My first time, it was over 30 years ago oh, really? when I first went there. I also went to college in the US. That must make you like, what, 90 years old or something? I am 88, actually. <laughs> and somehow I still managed to climb the 250 stairs. At least. At least to get to this tiny little studio you're in. Hey, can I ask you a question? Are you allowed? To, is there a, in France? I know in a lot of English speaking countries, you're not meant to ask a woman their age. Is mm -hmm. that particularly true in France or not yeah, at all? Yeah, it is. It, yeah. You're not supposed to ask. Yeah. Yet, interestingly, when you apply for a job, they do want you, I believe, still want you to have your age on the mm -hmm. resume, which mm -hmm. in the US is a big no no. Really? So that's an interesting thing. Well, right? it sounds like you're getting annoyed. Save the <laughs> annoyance for the list. <laughs> the first thing you've written on the list is you've written, and I'm going to do it in the voice that I imagined when you wrote it, right? As okay, as you've oh, written, that could be interesting. Not the accent, just the tone, right? Okay. You've written, it's not just Paris. <sighs> What do you mean by that? Um, well, when you meet, I'm going to talk a lot about Americans sure, because this okay. is the country I know the best. But, with but if you're listening and you're an Australian or you're mm -hmm. a Brit or you're in I Fiji, I think it applies to other I think people. it probably applies to Yeah. Them. So the first thing is, uh, you know, people meet you and of course they um, realize you're French right away yep. because, like me, you have an accent. Sure. And so they'll say, oh, I love Paris. Yep. And how does and that make you feel? Well, at the beginning, it doesn't anymore. But at the beginning, it's like, now I just smile. Yeah. But at the beginning, it's like, oh, okay, great. Well, I have to maybe say that I am from Toulouse, mm. right? Mm. I think I mentioned it. You did. So I am from southern France. I've lived all over France. I love to spend time in France outside Paris. So for me, it's a little bit like, oh, come on, guys. Uh, you know, mm. I know a lot of people come to Paris 10, 15 times. And some of them... They do day trips, but they'll never go outside Paris. That's true. Yeah. It drives me crazy. Yeah, I know it drives you crazy. You comment I mean, on my stories freak. sometimes. <laughs> you say, get out of Paris, Oliver. But yes. you know what's happening in season four. We'll talk about that later. Yes, anyway. that's exciting. Yeah. I'm proud of you, Oliver. Thank you very much. I'm proud of your fiancé because I think it was her idea. I think, well, now that we've just brought it up, it's true. It was her idea. If any of you guys missed the live episode we did last week, because mm -hmm. we're recording this on Monday, the day it's going to be mm -hmm. released here, uh, I revealed season four, me and uh, my future wife are going to be traveling around France on a scooter in a big love heart shape. Dear God. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> she's we, a good sport. She's brave. She is brave. Uh -huh. But you and I, Ver Veronique, we had a coffee the other day and discussed it. And deep down, I think you think it's a good idea. Deep down, it's a good idea. I did, I did give you some um, like logistical uh, points, yeah, like you maybe said, some yeah, advice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of saving your future marriage. Yeah, that's, that's You know, because I am 98 years old the and I have more experience than you do. You, the, well, you were 88 about two minutes oh, ago, so you're aging I just very quickly. aged. <laughs> But I just you said aged. one of the first things you said was consider getting a car instead of a scooter. 
Uh, well, no. I said not any car. No. I said one of you should follow the other in a deux chevaux. Deux chevaux. A Citroën a two CV. The famous French little... My favorite car yeah. in the whole entire world. Mm. Because I think this is really French. And I think you could, you know, have your gear in there. If it it's starts true. raining, you it's could true. put, you know, just wait for I the rain. I need room for a laptop at least. Well, there you go. Where yeah. are you going to put that on the scooter? Uh, I'm going to attach it to my helmet. On well, the top of the helmet. This is going to be fun. No, I, I haven't thought wait. about it. Logistics, I, that's what I don't know. See, I'm very organized, so I always think about logistics. Yeah. And, and also, I'm thinking about your future marriage. I think I think it's going to get, I don't know. You're very kind. Okay. Bonne chance, Oliver. Merci, merci. Okay, so we've <laughs> said it's not just Paris. So if you guys out there listening meet a French person, don't necessarily assume they're from Paris and don't... Uh, and, and don't definitely don't say I love Paris straight away. You can slip it in later because it is a city to love. Yeah. Um, but maybe maybe two minutes into the conversation. Maybe. Rather than straight away. How in nice. fact, take a gamble and say um, say something like, "Oh, I love Toulouse," even oh, if you you've know, never been that, there. That I would like you already. See. After yeah. thirty-five seconds. There you go. Thirty-five seconds. Mention Toulouse before <laughs> Paris. Okay. So the second thing you've written down it's an interesting one. You've written. We're not all, I'm doing the tone again, mm -hmm. we're not all geography experts. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, but that's on me more than on the people who talk to me. But that's why we, we're not all geography experts. But what do you, what do you mean by that? This is something well, about... Well, you know, people get excited. And um, so, okay, so not everybody says, I love Paris. Some people will actually say, I love France. I've been many times. Cool, yeah. And just last month, my wife and I went to... Brrr, and they give me a name, ah. and I don't know. It's it could be a small village, it could be a small town, and then they look at me and they have this, this look on their face like they're hopeful. An expectation. And I, there. I an expectation, yeah. and I hate letting them down. And yeah. I say, oh, okay, um, whereabouts is it? Mm. Uh, is there a big city next right. to it? So and they try to, and uh, then they try to help me. Yeah. So then it becomes awkward. So it's a double whammy of their pronunciation. Plus, maybe you don't know the village anyway. I could, yeah. Right. It could be that I don't know because I don't know every single plus village. Plus, you live in trip. Seattle, for goodness sake. I've lived in Seattle for 22 mm, years, mm, you know. Mm. And I don't get to travel around France as much as mm. I'd like. Mm -mm. So that actually leads nicely into the next point. We can continue talking about it. Uh, don't be upset if we don't understand your French necessarily, even if it could be great French. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, unintelligible. No, that's a bit that's a bit <laughs> harsh. But maybe uh, it's not perfectly pronounced, which can make it hard. Yeah. Uh, people, people are. I mean, I know they know that, so they'll apologize profusely. They'll right. say, "I know I'm butchering the name. I yeah. know I'm butchering the word." And they try. So eventually, you'll have them like spell it out or right. write it down on something. Sure, sure, sure. But I used to teach French. I had a business in Seattle where I, I used to teach French. So. I can kind of guess very often. Sure. I'm used to some. So when they say, uh, I love Versailles. Yeah, Versailles, you know, you know I know it's Versailles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I will understand a lot of it. But if it's a place I've never heard about or never been to, then I'm stuck. So what can we give it as advice for people who've been to an unusual place? And Maybe practice with locals practice when they go to a cafe. Yeah. That's a nice way of actually chatting with French yeah. waiters who are a lot friendlier than they give than they get credit for. Sure, sure. Um, you know, how how do you say Rouen? Yeah. How do you say Caen in Normandy? Yeah. You know, all these city names that are so hard to pronounce Reims. for foreigners. Reims. Reims. Ooh, that was good, Oliver. That's the hardest one. Well, I've done There's a whole episode. You. I've done an episode yeah. with a French teacher about the hardest words. That is about. true. And a lot of people would call it Reims, but it's Reims. Reims. That yeah. was very good. Thanks. I've been practicing. <laughs> I can tell. I've never been there, though. Oh, no. it's it's so close. Really? Oh, yeah. geez. I'm saving Oliver, it for the it's scooter a day trip. trip. I'm scared. Um, yeah, it's I'm gonna, a day trip. I'm going to do some day trips as practice for the big scooter Get trip. on the train and just no, go no, no, to Reims. No, no, scooter, scooter, scooter. Oh, gosh. Reims. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> as a little side note, because we were talking before when we were talking about pronunciation, um, you say a lot of Americans pronounce something very wrong in their restaurants. Oh, uh, well, it's just me. I'm just being weird this about that word. This is just a Veronique thing. This That's isn't a it's tip It's just for me. I'm just because I'm What's 98. Yeah. I I can be grouchy at times. 108 now. No. I'm 108 by now. Yeah. Oh gosh. What's the word? Um. So the word is blanc, which means white. Yeah. B L A N C. Sure. So guys, if you only remember one thing out of this whole podcast today. Forget everything, but remember one thing, especially... Remember to subscribe, the one thing... Is that what you were going to say? <laughs> remember for it. To, no. Go for <laughs> okay, it. Okay, go on, the one subscribe thing. Subscribe to the podcast, <laughs> leave you. a review for Oliver, especially a nice one. He loves those. Yeah, you've listened to enough episodes. You I can know. do the intro and the... I know, I know. Okay, so, so the one word, uh, sorry. So the, the, one, the one word is blanc, and it's pronounced blanc. It's a nasal sound. The A and the N are combined, blanc, and the C is never, never, Don't never pronounce pronounced. 
So it's not Sauvignon Blanc. No. It's Sauvignon Blanc. It's not beurre blanc for that sauce. It's beurre blanc. So it's just my pet peeve. Sometimes I like to think that the listeners will repeat after things that are said on the show. Well, that's so why I said it slowly. Well, I think so. we'll do it again. Are you guys out there driving in a car by yourself yes. or with let's, your family? Let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it, it together, okay. okay? Together. So first, Veronique, you say it and then okay. we'll all repeat. So we will say the wine first. Sauvignon blanc. Sauvignon blanc. Shh. No, wrong. That's what you shouldn't eh. do. Sauvignon blanc. Okay, and perfect. Number two, beurre blanc. Beurre blanc. Wonderful. I sort of did a little C at the end, but that's because no, this, no, no, micro- no. this microphone yeah, yeah. catches everything. Yeah. I couldn't even I couldn't sneak it past <laughs> the microphone. So if anything is blanc, you guys, you go around France, you see a street named Cheval Blanc, White Horse. Impress all your friends around you and just say Cheval Blanc. Oh, wow. There's one exception I've just realized to the rule. Which is? The actor in Friends, Joey. His name's Matt LeBlanc. It's only Matt LeBlanc because it's an American show. But so sometimes in you France, have to pronounce the In France, he's known as Matt LeBlanc. Is he? Ma- of course, okay. Matt LeBlanc. Is it in the show Friends? Is, is that called like Les Amis? I think it was called Friends, actually. Really? I don't remember, but I, I, it was in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. You were in Seattle at that point anyway. I was already there. Okay, what we've got next is, uh, this is an interesting one that I'd never thought about before. Mm-hmm. Especially because you and I are different. Like, I'm an English speaker that's come to Paris and you're a French speaker that's gone to America. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've said, don't necessarily remind us or remind you about mm-hmm. your accent. Right. So this is mostly when you first arrive, I think. Yep. Uh, when you first arrive, especially if you've studied the language of your new country, mm-hmm. your adoptive country, and if you've spent a lot of time studying the language, it kind of reminds you you're a, you're a foreigner when people say, I, and they say, you know, they say to be nice. Yeah. And they say, I love your accent. And you're going, oh, that's true. I have an accent. And at, at the beginning, you almost think you've lost your right, accent. Right, right. You, you sound American or Australian or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they remind you every time you meet them. Mm. Oh, but it's so cute. Mm. It's a cute so accent. That's a tough one because they're trying to be very nice. Yes, but they remind you you're a stranger. They mm. remind you or a foreigner. They remind you you're not from there. Now, this being said, after a few years, especially if you dabble in the type of business that I was in, mm. you, you come to see this as a perk. Sure. Because, you know, I was French girl in Seattle. I was teaching French and the accent is part of the of gig. Course, yeah, and yeah. since I can never lose it anyway... It worked to my advantage. But you know what's interesting about that is in uh, besides the perk bit of it, what's also interesting is when I come here, when mm-hmm. I move to Paris, sometimes I would speak French and mm-hmm. someone would say, hey, you know, we can speak English if you want. You know, they're just d- as a friendly thing and they'd mm-hmm. switch. And I would sometimes be frustrated because I, I was like, no, I want to practice my French. And sometimes I would say, sure, let's speak English. Sure. Sometimes I'd say, uh, yeah, great. Uh, no, no, no. Sometimes I'd say, no, let's keep in French, please. But that, when you're in the States, I imagine, doesn't happen so often that people no. say to you, oh, oui, mais on peut pas le français, hein? <laughs> no, right? it doesn't happen. So <laughs> what the difference is, is that they pick up on your accent rather yes. than switching language. Exactly. But you know that about the French is interesting, especially in Paris. The Parisians can never win. Some foreigners complain that they, you know, that they don't speak English. Yeah. And then some foreigners complain that if they try to yep. speak French to the French, the French will re- reply in English. So they can never win. It's true. They can't ever win. They can't. They, they, can't. Can't, they just can't. And people just criticize them. They can't but win. But I mean, wh- I think if someone was speaking a language to me and I saw they were struggling, mm-hmm. I would still... I think the rule should be you pers- everyone perseveres until the person learning right. runs out of steam. But, uh, oh, right, uh, or, or the person just can't take it anymore. Yeah. Like if we were having this conversation and you were discussing your last meal at a French restaurant with me and yeah. you actually said in a row, I was, I was a Rue du Cheval Blanc, yeah. I had Sauvignon Blanc and the, <laughs> and the fish came with Beurre Blanc. And I was eating with Matt Leblanc. <laughs> and, and Matt Leblanc <laughs> was, my, I was at the table next door. I would just have to scream or I would have to say yeah. something. I, I, I can appreciate that. I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think it's a tough, it's a really tough one always. My favorite thing is when a French person and an English person are speaking and then there's this thing, they can both speak both languages and then someone says, oh, should we speak English or French? Mm-hmm. And someone says, uh, comme vous préférez. I love that line, as you prefer. Like, yeah, you which can is choose. nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah, it's happened to me a lot. Like with you, we started speaking English, but I almost asked, do you want to speak French? Well, yeah. Tonight, I'm actually Wouldn't meeting have been a long someone. conversation. Yeah, I'll ask her if she wants to speak French because she's lived in France for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask That's her. That's nice. Yeah. Huh. Okay, uh, what I've got, I've got two more. Okay. Time's flying. It always does. Uh-huh. Uh, you said uh, you don't have to always comment on the name. What do you mean by that? Do you mean your name? 
Oh, yes, my name. Yeah, my name gets a lot of comments if I hand out a credit card in a store or mm. people read my name. Because you get an accent on the E as well, Véronique, right? Véronique, and yeah. you, you would not believe what how my name has been pronounced oh, yeah. until I pronounced it for people. Veronique. Veronique, Veronique, you, Veronique, Veronique. Yeah. So I'll just say, okay, Veronique, and then they say, oh, it's so pretty. Right. I heard that, I cannot tell you how many times, which is really nice. It's n- yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's another thing. It, it is a nice thing. It is a nice thing. And then I almost diffuse it. I say, mm. okay, well, it's just Veronica in mm. French. Mm. And in, in, in the 60s in France, it was this popular name. There were lots of Brigitte's mm. and Veronique's. And they say, it's just prettier in French. I guess it's like if there was a really, really beautiful person, would they get sick of being told they were beautiful, wouldn't they? The, well, I imagine, I'm not, I don't I'm, know. I don't know. No. I don't know. We don't know, I'm do we? I'm not that beautiful, plus I'm, I'm very old. We're so just radio <laughs> people. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Oliver. No, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But, I mean, it must be the same thing. You don't want to hear the same compliment too many times because it's like there's more to me than my name. Yes, but well, it's nice. I mean, they want to say my name is nice. I yeah. Thank you. You know, yeah. I, I, I appreciate it. But uh, you won't... You, Oh, now, okay, now it's a jackhammer. It feels like they're drilling directly underneath us now. I'm feeling worried. Wow. Are we going to collapse? This could be... Uh, welcome to the last ever episode <laughs> of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> uh, Bye, Oliver. Yikes. Okay, so the name thing, it, it is nice to comment on the name, but keep in mind, guys, maybe these people have heard it a million times. Mm-hmm. Just do your best to pronounce it. Yeah. Although with Veronique, it's hard because we don't have the R in English. People are very hesitant to pronounce it, and they very politely ask me. They really? say, ve- ve- how do you say it? And I say, Veronique, and they say, oh, it's so pretty. Do you give an English version of it sometimes, like Veronique? Yeah, I, I, I explain. Yeah, Veronique, yes. Yeah. If I have to spell it or, uh, you know, if I want them to over the phone, yeah, I'll yeah. say Veronique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my, my intro line when I did my travel workshops in Seattle was, my name is Veronique Savoy. 20 years ago when I moved to Seattle, I became Veronica Savoy. Yeah. And I always <laughs> got a big laugh when yeah. I started. <laughs> That's a good one. French people call me Olivier, though. Olivier, Without yeah. thinking, they changed my name. I know, but Oliver. Yeah, although I think there is a name Oliver in French as well. There is? But I, I did not so. know. Well, that's how I say it when I introduce myself. Oliver, so they understand. Oliver, Oliver, Oliver so they won't say Olivier. Yeah. I although I that's quite like idea. the Olivier bit. I Olivier is a very pretty name. Yeah. I had a guest on this show once called Olivier, and he he was all that drilling. <laughs> and he said, uh, I was pronouncing it wrong anyway. It's Olivier. 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 This gets me scared just thinking about it. Okay, uh, <laughs> the last point you've written here. Uh, before the drilling uh, comes through the floor and kills us all, (laughs) is uh, leave the stereotypes alone. Right. This could, this could be a whole podcast episode, really. And, and, and there's, we don't even need to spend a lot of time on this because everybody's heard them. Yep. Everybody's read about them. Yeah, let's go through. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Oh, yeah, Get yeah. over it, guys. Don't say yeah, that. Or um, what's the one that dates back to the 18th century and everybody thinks the French still say it? Oh, yeah. Sacre bleu. Oh, yeah. Sacre bleu. I've never heard that here. I, I, I guarantee you. I mean, I, last time I heard a French person say that was... When I was born in the 19th century. All right. <laughs> or, uh, you know what? I did see, uh, I saw the other day there was a shop called Sucre Bleu. Oh, well, that's a clever, yeah, except clever it was, play like, on you'd think, So that means like sugar instead of... Like, yes, yeah, Sucre Bleu. Yeah. yeah, but you'd think that w- it was a patisserie or something? No, it was a stationery shop. Interesting. So good play on words, bad but, connection. But weird, yeah, yeah. bad connection. Yeah. So yeah, so those things and then all the stereotypes about the arrogant. French. Arrogant, people say they're arrogant. Arrogant, yep. um, they don't wash, mm. they don't use soap, they spray themselves in perfumes, yep. uh, women are hairy. Yep. Uh, and then of course the big classic that you heard a lot around 2003, which was the French are cowards. Right, because of the uh, the, the war, it didn't follow the Americans over. Uh-huh. Yep, 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 so yep. all of that fun stuff. So when... Uh, this is a pretty easy one. Just don't say that stuff, I assume. No, and usually people Especially don't. Especially not if you're drunk. Yes. Uh, yeah, if, when it happens, it's because people are very drunk. Um, and then you don't argue with drunk people. So I just, you know, I would just walk away. Mm. But there are sometimes, there are sometimes you can hear a couple of, yeah, little comments. So, so what would you, for someone like an American who's never met you before, mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, imagine they're listening to this and they're about to meet a, a French person. Mm-hmm. What kind of conversation should they be having with a French person when Where? it comes to in France? Where? In the U.S. Yeah, or, in, the or, US, or yeah. in France? What's something you like talking about in, fr- in the U.S.? 
Oh, well, the French love discussing politics. Yeah. But that I- that is, especially right now in the US, that's a very slippery slope. Yeah, so ex- let's not say politics. But yeah, so no politics. Um, but the French um, know a lot about the United States. Yeah. Um, they study it at school. Mm. They read the news. And so they're very interested in literature, in movies. Uh, they know about big American cities. So there's a lot you can talk about. Mm-hmm. What oh, about in general around the world? What are the things that French people like talking about France? Tell me a subject that could... I could stop a French person on the street and get them going on. What do you mean? Anywhere yeah, in the world? Yeah, yeah. Food. 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 Good, good Even word. more than wine. Yeah. Food. Well, there you go. Yeah, anything. You know, f- anything food related. So if you want to get on the good side of a French person, meet them. Yeah. Try and pronounce their name right. Don't comment too long about their name. <laughs> Don't bring up Paris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't bring up American politics just in case. They can bring up Paris if they bring bring up the rest of France. But That's with right. the Parisian, they'll be fine. The Parisians think their city is the most beautiful city in the world. They will just love it. And there's no real problem with that because it's a pretty beautiful city. You can't it deny is. that. We're it sitting is. here on the seventh floor of an apartment, yep. fairly central Paris, looking out over the window. You are anyway, yeah, over I, my shoulder. I, I am, and it's it's really raining right now. It might now. be a rainy day, but as I think Woody Allen said, Paris is beautiful in the rain. Was that Woody Allen? Well, if, if we, one of his characters in that movie said yeah. it. Well, I said it too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that French uh, actress says it at the end of the movie. That's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think you've given us a great insight into how to irritate slash not irritate French people or at least how to act around French people. So, uh, Véronique Savoy of French Girl in Seattle, thanks for coming into the studio. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the show and sharing it all those times. So, I'm going to do the favor straight back to you right now. Everybody, right now, <laughs> when you turn off this podcast or even while it's on, open up frenchgirlinseattle.com, subscribe for the emails, mm-hmm. go on the Facebook page, click like, mm-hmm. enjoy it. There's a good mix of everything French uh, in English. And uh, Instagram. Yeah. Is it what is it? French girl in Seattle. On it's Instagram? always in. St- yeah, it's all French girl in Seattle. And there'll be a brand new website at the beginning of May. I'm very excited about that. There you go. Beginning of May, 2018. Brand new website. But go and check it out before, so you can appreciate the old yep. version of it. The, the old fashioned website. Yeah, on yeah. It, yeah. The blog is on the old fashioned website. So there you have it, uh, French girl. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Oliver. It was fun. You're listening to the Earful Tower podcast. Well, there you have it. That was Veronique, French girl in Seattle. Check out her website, as I said. But yeah, she so she hung around afterwards for a Patreon chat for all you guys who are supporting the show. 120 of you very generous, friendly people supporting this show. Uh, she hung around for another 10, 15 minutes where we talked about what it's like to be a tourist in your own country. So it's kind of interesting. She's walking around Paris as a French woman who's lived in Paris for 10, 10 years, but also as a tourist. So if you sign up uh, on Patreon, you'll be able to hear that straight away basically uh but yeah usually i finish the show by reading some of your reviews but guess what you didn't leave any reviews this week so uh you've spoken loud and clear you want me to do something else so guess what i'm going to do i'm going to give you a bit of a look into something really cool for season four now if you missed the uh, live episode i did last week where i revealed the plans for season four Uh, Here it is in a nutshell, even though you've just heard me and Veronique describing what's going to happen. It's me and my fiancé, who at this point will be my wife, if all goes to plan. We're going to get on my little red scooter. We're going to drive from Paris to Paris around the entire outside of France in a big kind of love heart shape. Uh, I don't know how well I'll be able to do this love heart shape, especially with my driving uh, and with Lena's map reading ability. It's not going to be pretty, but it will be interesting. We're going to be taking photos, videos, doing podcasts along the way because this is a trip that you shouldn't miss. Uh, but after announcing it, I got this great email. I want to read it out with you uh, for you guys because I think you'll find it pretty interesting too. <clears throat> it's from Jim in Brisbane, Australia. He says, hey, Oliver, I watch your live one-hour show from Brisbane. I've been listening to your podcast over the last couple of seasons. Congratulations on the engagement. The idea of a round France journey seems fantastic, although it does sound like more of a slow amble on your 50 kilometer an hour scooter. Yeah, well, that's true. It will be slow. Uh, (laughs) But I think that will be good. We can savor it. Uh, Jim continues, it'll be great to highlight some of La France Profonde, which means more than just Paris, basically, the countryside. And this is where it gets really interesting. He says, we have a little house in a small village in the Charente, which is in sort of western France. It's a lovely little area. You might even be passing through on your journey south. Uh, We usually let it out to friends and friends of friends, but if you're passing through the area in your honeymoon, and if you're so inclined, feel free to stay at the lovely village of Verteuil-sur-Charente for a couple of days and stay at our little place for free, a little wedding gift from one Aussie to another. Cheers and all the best, Jim. 
Well, Jim, that is absolutely above and beyond generous. And uh, I looked up where it is, where, where, where this village is, Vertoy sur Charente. I can't pronounce it, but I'll learn to pronounce it because I will make sure that we go through that lovely looking little village. And thanks for your generosity. Any of you other guys out there that know cool places to visit, get in touch. But I'm really happy to say there is at least one destination on this trip now that I'm looking forward to checking out. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about this trip as time comes. It's going to be in about August, September. Uh, I think both of the months, maybe mid-August to mid-September. We're finalizing the details, but I'm telling you guys now so you can give me some recommendations. Any ideas, send them in to me. You know the site, theearfultower.com. You know my email address, info at theearfultower.com. Yeah, that's about it. So that rounds off another week, I think. Uh, You'll have another episode on Monday. And there's plenty more in the pipeline that I can't wait to share with you. So I'll talk to you when I talk to you. Au revoir.